All right. What is up, Trust Engine and Mortgage Coach community? I have a very special interview today. We are recording this on August 21st of 2024. A very special day in the mortgage industry because this is the, the first time we've seen numbers where IMBs, uh, independent mortgage bankers, have shown a profitability. And who better to be interviewing today than Jim Deitch uh, with Televerti? Uh, I first interviewed Jim last year. Uh, with the title of Moneyball Mortgage. I had no idea. One, what an incredible conversation that would be. Uh, it was it was one of the top 10 most viewed um, interviews of the year last year. Uh, Clayton Collins actually asked me to do a, a Moneyball uh, panel with Brian Hale at uh, the, the big um, gathering event. And uh, Jim, we're back. I think we need to do another top 10 interview, brother. Hey, I'm looking forward to it, David. Thank you so much. Yeah. So so Jim and I had a conversation a few weeks ago, and the the whole theme that Jim, you know, he opened the conversation. This is all his headline. I did not come up with this, which was the profit-driven lender. So I love I love the headline, my friend. It is a great lender or a great headline. And interestingly, uh, today marks a change in the industry where more than half of the lenders are actually profitable. In fact, about 17 basis points, according to the MBA and the 330 uh, companies that are in that survey. And it is a great day for the industry because after eight quarters of losses, we finally break the streak. Yeah, no, it's it's amazing. And wasn't it actually 80% of, of the IMBs reporting? And it looks like uh, 345 lenders reported. Jim, is it safe to say that the lenders that reported are likely the biggest and most resource companies because they had the resources to deliver the reporting. Is that a, is that a safe assumption or any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it is a safe assumption. It is definitely the middle and large lenders, both in the IMB space, as well as the bank owned mortgage banking space. Uh, and that 80% profitability, just a little asterisk, it includes those who service. So if you looked at just the purely origination focus side of things. It's it's a little less, it's more than 50% though. And it is finally great to see the cost per loan coming down. So lots of good news in in the uh, the second quarter release from the MBA. Yeah, well, Jim and I are going to have a conversation where we're also going to try to make the case that guys, that IMBs, if run effectively, if measuring the metrics that matter most, like we talked about at Moneyball, and, and truly managing the business and training loan officers to do it could could be profitable in every market, like literally could have been a profitable and a very high rate, um, difficult market and could be obviously even more profitable in a, in a lower rate. Um, at least hopefully that's the market we're going into. Uh, so, so Jim, what do you, you know, first of all, anything else you want to add to that before we just get into what is a profit driven lender in your, in your perspective? I, I think a couple of things, Dave. The, the, the first is uh, the, the reduction in cost to originate, uh, I think, is notable because it is not on much larger volume. It's lenders really taking some action to be intentional about working on that that twelve thousand dollar cost to originate that's been worked down to, you know, just over ten thousand. That's still 50% more than it was five years ago, but nonetheless, it's the difference between making money and not. And I think the other piece of this is within every, every company that we've studied, there are mortgage loan originators, underwriters, the, the people that have the most effectiveness, that top tier of individual, drive the profitability of a company. And even within companies, there's large variations. And I know you've shared some things on Trust Engine uh, regarding how the discipline of using that, that particular process can really lead to large increases in individual performance. And I, maybe it's just worth reviewing that for a minute. Yeah, well, what, you know, why don't we do this? Let's take this in chapters. Let's kind of ch chapter one, we kind of talked about the MBA, the numbers, a vision and a belief that we both share. Let's get into the profit-driven lender, and then let's close out with tactics and strategies so that literally, guys, here's an idea that if you did this, you would be even more profitable now, and you would uh, 
likely be profitable in any in any market. Yep. Awesome. Let's, let's close on oh. tactics. Awesome. Mind if I share? Yeah, go ahead. Share your screen. Okay. So uh, wanted to just go through and uh, talk a little bit about Moneyball Mortgage. It was a great thing that we started with that. And just to think about the movie, uh, about the 2000. Uh, to 2003 at Oakland Athletics. Um, the movie is really about data drivenness within major league sports. And, and the foil in that particular movie is Peter Brand. He's a, he's a nerdy guy that does a lot on data analytics. And he said, there's an epidemic failure in what we're doing. And we're asking all the wrong questions. So that movie intrigued me on a number of uh, reasons. And I did have a chance to talk to Billy Bean a couple times, most recently, uh, when I was writing my second book. And also got to talk to Michael Lewis and uh, really said to, to Billy, why do you get involved with Michael Lewis? And we talked a little bit about uh, the business. And he said, people in baseball business focus on scouting and, and you know, trying to find players that look good, not necessarily perform well. And at a lending conference, he said, look, mortgage lenders fixate on volume, not on profit. And that was really the reason I spent some time talking with him in depth and uh, plug for the book that uh, Opens Doors uh, Foundation, the Mortgage Bankers Association, gets all the royalties. It's strategically uh, transforming the mortgage banking business. There's a long story in there about Billy, and it's an interesting story. Also talked to Michael Lewis about why do you write a book? And he's an investment banker that wrote uh, a number of books, including uh, Moneyball. He said, I wanted to talk about how you solve a significant issue of interest to me. And in Moneyball, it was, why is the market for baseball players so imperfect? You overpay for certain players that don't perform, and you underpay for certain players that really perform. And there's a parallel to the mortgage business in some ways. So that information we talked about, Dave, about the mortgage bankers data set, uh, we've researched those 330, 345 reporters that are independent mortgage bankers, bank-owned mortgage bankers, banks, and looked at the last nine or 10 quarters to find out what's the difference between those that were making money, because even in the most difficult market, there were 20 some percent of the lenders that were making money and those that weren't. And here's a piece of that research I want to share with you. Uh, the best in class to worst in class in revenue, the band was pretty tight. It wasn't that the best in class was two times more efficient in total revenue than the worst in class. It really was only about uh, a variation of about 14, 15 percent on the cost side. That's where the big differences were. And the cost to produce varied in some of the research we looked at to as little as $7,000 alone to over $20,000 alone. And that difference is largely responsible for the eight quarters of losses. It was failure to control costs. And the difference in best in class and worst in class was significant. So uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of that. And uh, maybe we can go from there. Yeah, well, it's, I'm not going to share slides for this one, um, but I do want to talk about going beyond loan manufacturing. And when you look at how loan costs have gone up year after year after year, I I make a case that the, the cost for technology has gone up a lot. Like it's literally 3X. And when you look at when, when was the pivot that it's just like, 3x it was um it was when the rocket went off during a super bowl commercial and what i call is the arms race in the mortgage industry everybody's like oh we got to have push button and have mortgage and 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 one of the things that the industry has done ever really ever since then is obsessed over the loan manufacturing process and and then when you look at the nba numbers loans per loan officer loans per underwriter they haven't gotten more efficient. And, and so one of, one of the things that I'd love to hear your thoughts on this is that if we really started obsessing over beyond loan manufacturing, you know, cause, cause I, I have firsthand data that if a loan officer 
delivers a mortgage coach experience versus a fee worksheet, which by the way, you can take a compliant loan that you can sell in the secondary market with just a fee worksheet, but you're giving up 10% in conversion and you're giving up, and we know this, 20 basis points um, on average. Like we have lenders that the lowest I've ever seen is nine. The highest I've ever seen is 65 basis points with big lenders. You know, that 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 65 basis point was a 400 loan officer lender. It was an FM lending uh, that if you just went beyond loan manufacturing, you could be 20 basis points more profitable and have better conversion. Any any thoughts on how the industry needs to, yes, we need to tighten up the loan manufacturing cost, but we also need to drive best practice processes in front of loan manufacturing. That is, is absolutely the case, Dave. Um, we did a survey at ICE Experience and we did another survey at Meridian Link and we asked two questions. The first question uh, of our audiences that was polled was how much automation that's native in your POS, LOS, and other systems do you actually use? And the choices, people put in a number. And on average, it was about 25%. And I was shocked. Uh, first of all, that people were so honest. And second of all, they knew what they weren't doing. So the second question we asked, was if you used all the data that's in your various automation systems, POS, CRM, LOS, how much would the profitability per loan improve if you actually used and apply that data? It's a question that really was kind of money ball mortgage driven. And right. the answer to me was shocking. Uh, the ICE group put it at about $2,200 a file. And the Meridian Link group was slightly above that. So my question to the audience after that was, so you know you're only using 25% of the automation available and you know you're not using the data, but if you fully exploited the data, you'd make another $2,100 per loan. What are you waiting for? And the answers were, it's tough to change. It's tough to adopt. We got so many other things going on. And I left that conference just thinking about how it was possible that lenders know what they need to do. They just don't do it. What you thought? I mean, that just, just floored me. Yeah. And actually I did find a couple slides that um, they're a quarter behind, but they also help make the case. You know, this is a MBA slide. And just so you know, we've got a few more quarters to put in here and we're finally going to have a profitable quarter. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, but but here's here's the the cost and the increase in technology since 2023. And you know, here here is the productivity measures since 2003. And I mean, look at this. This this is not a good trend. I mean, expenses are up, productivity is down and um and so i just i just feel like uh you you said something there we're not at we're there we're asking the wrong questions that was quote from moneyball mortgage yep. and then i i have a, a a comment and we're not measuring the right metrics and then training on the skills that matter most and any any thoughts on that uh, dave i i think first of all that you're exactly right. Not measuring the metrics that really matter that drive performance. Uh, uh, it, it, it is an industry-wide issue. We know what those metrics are, but again, we just don't necessarily pay attention to them and utilize them or even measure them. And then, uh, you know, secondly, the individual performance factors, when you look at those numbers and look at productivity, there's variation among those individuals, whether they're loan officers, underwriters, front, front office, back office. There's a wide dispersion, a very wide dispersion of performance that is, to me, pretty incredible. Uh, give me an example. I, I, viewed, uh, I interviewed Gary Kelly of Southwest Airlines uh, when he was still CEO. 
and spent two days at the Dallas uh, training facility for Southwest. It's 600,000 square feet and got exposed to literally everybody in the Southwest organization and had a little you know, thing around my neck that let me talk to anybody about anything. Uh, and I asked Gary, how, how is it that we have such a hard time manufacturing a mortgage, but we have such a hard time giving necessarily the great customer experience. How do you do it in the airline? He goes, look, in any given year, we have a 1.5 million takeoffs and landings. And we don't break anything in 1.5 million takeoffs and landings. And it comes from discipline and focusing on the metrics that really matter. And in, in flying an aircraft, those metrics are target airspeed and configuration of the aircraft. That's it. It's that simple. If you get those two metrics right, you can operate that aircraft safely, effectively, and take 250,000 pounds of metal, fling it into the sky, fly it to where you want, land it, and, and literally not break anything or hurt anybody. It's a million and a half times a year, and that's just, just Southwest. And it's, it's just amazing to me that you get that consistency because they are focusing on those two very, very important metrics, target airspeed and target configuration. And they're measured, pilots are analyzed, and the variability of skill in the pilot is really tight. The difference between a great aviator and an okay aviator is they still land the plane without breaking anything. They might yeah. be a little more efficient, they might be a little better in their, in their customer relationship, but every one of them is competent. And it's because of that discipline, the use of technology, and the use of training. And yeah. they're proving, and, proving they can fly. Yeah, and, and notice industry, those are like not the two most um, obvious metrics. And so like the most obvious metrics to measure loan officer performance is how many loans did they close and what their production is and to score them. But, but the, you know, they're not picking the most obvious metrics there. Like what if we picked conversion uh, loans, you know, credit reports to close loans. And what if we also pick something around data? Like, cause we know the data that's monitored for eligibility, that's monitored for propensity to actually need a loan and that loan officers are contacting that and we have automation that is assisting those loan officers at contacting that. Like if we started measuring data to loans and credit reports to close loans and then gamifying that, because I realize like, hey, distributed retail, you, you know, part of why loan officers get into the business is the freedom of the job. They're not being micromanaged. Um, and I'm not, I'm not pr proposing that. I'm just proposing like, hey, most mortgage professionals are competitive. They they don't like to be at the bottom of the list. They want to be at the top of the list and and they want to know where they're at on the list. But what if we just started measuring things that that led to closed loans and led to production? Any any thoughts on that, Jim? I I think that is a a fantastic insight, Dave. The you know, going back to the example of, of a pilot, if you're on target airspeed at approach, your aircraft is configured appropriately. You just sit there and let the aircraft go on a three degree glide slope onto the runway. And mm -hmm. if it's windy, you have some work to do, but basically you've, you've factored success in with the discipline of using a system. And what I hear you saying is that there are ways to measure the conversion rate. There's ways to measure the profit leakage that results from loans that don't close, from poor conversion rate, from credit reports pulled indiscriminately. Um, all those elements are, are really very, very related to profitability. And they're teachable and they're a discipline. It's the same discipline that a surgeon applies when doing surgery. It's the same discipline a pilot uh, applies when flying. And it's an interesting thing in the industry. And I grew up in distributed retail and ran a couple shops. I did not know what I didn't know at that point. But knowing what we know today and looking at the metrics that really matter, and particularly some of the, the, 
the factors you just mentioned, it is, it is within our grasp to have 99.9% .9 of lenders be profitable if they so choose to be. And that's what a profit-driven lender is and a target-driven lender. It's working on those metrics that matter and just making the choice. I'm going to run my company what, on what a data-driven way. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going to show you guys just so you know, I mean, we have IMPs. We've got over, um, over 169 lenders that are on our platform. This is an example of the kind of reporting that we provide. The, the green line is where we identify data opportunities that loan officers should contact. The pink line is RESP apps. And the orange line is conversion. You know, so, so I mean, these are things that, you know, we do as just a, you know, modus operandi. And then, and then from a data perspective, this is the other thing that we believe that the industry needs to do if they really want to maintain profitably in all markets is not just trigger alerts. We need to move beyond trigger alerts in the industry because one, they're reactive. Those people are already in the market. Two, it's noise. And three, there's legislation coming. That even, you know, here at Trust Engine where we sell trigger alerts, we're, we, we think it's a good idea that that the industry starts following a different a different model, which is let's let's take multiple signals and then let's predict refis like we need to. A more, you know, rate and term refis are simple, but a debt can solve refi. And let's predict purchase, you know, when someone looks like there's a, a move up buyer in a household, when, so, when it looks like there's a first time home buyer. Like these are things that the technology is here, the ability is here. And by the way, I'm just making a case Start investing more money beyond the transaction, you know, going from data to loan, and and you'll you'll get an ROI in your entire tech stack. You will get an ROI in your entire tech stack, and you will also, I think, differentiate uh, because the 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 you know as as a briefing uh, with somebody from the DoD on AI and defense strategy. And one of the questions that was asked was, will AI put people out of work? Will they take jobs away? And his answer was no, AI will not eliminate any jobs. People that know how to use AI will eliminate right. the jobs of those who don't. And I think the same is true of, of data that uh, you, you see it in Major League Baseball with the amount of focus on data and the variability of of performance really being tied now to compensation much more directly mm -hmm. and right. when you when when you look at some of the data that you just shared it's a predictable way to say if we are losing as a as a as a company if we are one of those individuals who is not making money from the MBA uh, data set today what can we do and the, the answer is, in looking at the data, it's obvious, it's obvious what needs to be done. And it isn't rocket science. It isn't any, any uh, thing that's super, super difficult. It's simply focusing and having the discipline to manage by the data. And I think our industry, in, we look at, at lenders who are really, really good in making superior profitability and superior returns, it really comes from that discipline and pulling that variability into a tighter group of, of, of consistency. And that comes through literally application of data and the application of discipline to use those data-driven metrics that produce success. I love that you said application of data. I can't remember who said it for a stage. I was at an event lately and people said they don't, people don't pay for information. They pay for how it's organized and the application in which you organize it. And I think that's another challenge is how do we, how do we get the data to the right people at the right time organized in a way that they can apply it? And I'm going to, I'm going to show an example of doing that beyond loan manufacturing, and then I would love for you to share how you're helping lenders organize their data so they can make some business decisions and would love any impressions. So guys, this is the, 
you know, the, the trust engine app. And one of the things we were solving for, because we know that loan officers by and large do not log in to their CRMs. You know, there's a lot going on in there. And, and I don't, I, I don't know any CRM that at aggregate has loan officers more than 50% of LOs logging in and using it. And by and large, I think, you know, if a lender can have 30% of their LOs logging in. So we wanted to like, let's do something in the mobile device. Let's do nothing in this app, but give them signals. And usually you find out that it's about 1% of the database and let's predict purchase and refis. They could obviously sort it by date, but let's sort it by propensity to transact, you know, like, so that literally loan officer knows like in order of top to bottom, who, who have the highest propensity score. And then when they click on it, they, it's actionable. It's click to email, click to text, click to call, uh, you know, not using technology is a big cost item. And then, not knowing what to say. So let's give them scripts, what to say when they call, what to say when they text. Let's make it easy to copy, paste, click, like fast and easy, super focused. Again, it's 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 about how the data is organized. And so that the loan officer can scan all that. What are, what are your thoughts on this, Jim? Any impressions from the app and how we, we kind of organized data signals for mortgage professionals? Yeah, actually, I really appreciate you sharing that because if you think of data, there are four types of data that you can use and things like KPIs and tabular reports, that's just descriptive data. It's saying it's a description of here's what's happening. And that's the lowest common form of stuff. And virtually all BI, KPIs, all the reporting that people do is simply descriptive. The second stage of data as you get more sophisticated is diagnostic, okay? What is going wrong and how can you fix it? The third area of data is predictive. And some of the things you just showed were predictive elements that based upon the data sets and some of the uh, algorithms that are included in the product, you can get some signals about here's what you should do. So you're going from descriptive data, which is largely not very valuable, to diagnostic data, which is here are people that are performing well, here are people that aren't performing well. But what you've done is put that third and fourth layer, which is where the real money is. It's the predictive data that says this borrower is likely to do this, this borrower is likely to do that, this situation is open to have the opportunity to do business. And that top tier of that data, the very top tier of that data is prescriptive. It's prescriptive data that says you should call and here's the script to use. And that's where, if you looked at the value curve, it's logarithmic. Descriptive data is just, that's nice. Thanks very much. Don't really know and don't really care. Someone once showed me a, you know, 150 KPIs and said, I run my business this way. I said, I just want to see one thing. Show me your profitability. And the individual did. And it wasn't. It wasn't profitable. And so why are you looking at these 150 KPIs? They don't have anything to do with the objective of business, which is to earn a profit and do so providing great customer experience. So that static data, that, that descriptive data is largely not worth very much. That diagnostic, the predictive, and the prescriptive elements or where the real money is. And what you just showed me for a loan officer, I will tell you, uh, many, many people know I'm a pilot. So when I get in the cockpit with pilots that are professionals and I watch what they're doing, there's a little thing on a lot of aircraft called the angle of attack indicator. And it's red, green, yellow. If you go get that nose too high and too slow, the arrow points down. If you get it too fast, the arrow points up. And literally it's a simple prescriptive element that says, Here's what you should do to correct the situation given all the data taken in by the air computers. And similarly, when you're flying in traffic, if you have a conflict, those aircraft send beacons out that say, hey, we're heading together at the same altitude. One, out of, one aircraft will be told, break right, descend. The other will be turned, break left, ascend, and the conflict's avoided. That's 
prescriptive data. It's the highest value data you could possibly have. And you just showed me stuff that's delivered to somebody in a format. They don't have to log on. They don't have to do stuff. They just need to say, what should I do today? And it's money. It's money in the bank. Yeah, I, I feel, and I, I don't know, I might be drinking too much for Ron Cooley, but I have a fifth level for you. Tell uh -huh. me if I'm just, I'm making it up, but but it's it's predictive advice. It's where you're going from predicting the needs of a consumer to actually creating a consumer experience that is advising that customer and it's it's interactive. So I don't know if it's actually a fifth level, but for anyone listening, uh, that I do believe is where if you want to be in a, you know, a profit driven lender that is um, winning and you're killing it in, in markets like this, like minting money, but even in bad markets, you're profitable because you're, you're optimizing your loan officers based off a of conversion of both credit reports where the disclosure engine starts. You really start spending money when credit reports are run. Let's let's start gamifying that. And then, of course, you have data. Data is gold. Let's start measuring, you know, which loan officers are doing the best job of turning those in to applications that close. And and let's let's have a predictive advice platform and hopefully we'll help you do that. Jim, what are what are some other ideas? And then what are what are ways that people can leverage your platform and all the things that you guys are doing to to be more more profitable in any market? Yeah, great question, David. Before we go, I just want to want to note that on August 21st, 24, Savage created the P cubed index, which is profit comes from predictive and prescriptive data applied lovingly to a consumer to give them good advice. So <laughs> thank you. I, I'm going to run with that, my friend. Thank you. So uh, yeah, that's uh, we always invent good stuff together when we're here. So PQ. Yeah, we we do have fun. Yeah, a uh, couple of couple of things, and I'll I'll just share if I if I may. Uh, we we were on this area looking at this wide variability in costs, and one of the things that. Uh, we did by studying that data from roughly 340 lenders, 350 lenders, is it comes down to strategic focus of a lender. And this is using that, that descriptive data, which comes from the MBA, and then applying it to how can we make it predictive, diagnostic, and ultimately prescriptive. So those six dimensions around there uh, are a, a they're the variables you can actually manage as a lender. It's volume, it's product margin mix, it's productivity, automation, expense variability. How do you make expenses vary with the level of business you're doing in risk management? And uh, we went through and looked at and mapped the strategic focus of many lenders that are volume and mix driven. And what that shows is there's just a, an, an inordinate amount of attention paid to volume and an inordinate amount of attention paid to product mix and margin, which is great. But what happens is there isn't balance. And prescriptive wise, when we looked at the lenders that have the highest degree of profitability, it looks, it looks something like this, that there's a focus on volume and product, product uh, volume, product and margin. But the focus on productivity, making ensure that, that both the sales talent and the production talent and the operations talent is focusing on those things that really matter. They're being productive. They're not just doing things, they're doing the right things that, were, uh, that, that have the highest value. The adoption of automation and the variability, that management of expenses, so you have variability, really gives you the ability to drive profit. And the lenders that are profitable, the most profitable lender have a, a focus on these targets. And the, the amount of focus may vary based upon the lender, but it's not that singular or dual focus of just volume and product. It's really productivity, adoption of automation, and how you manage expenses, which really comes through adoption of automation. So that's what the research has shown. Uh, we've got a couple hey, of stay, stay on that for a second. Yeah. I just I I want to I just want to use that to put a little explanation mark. You know, let me let me know when you're done on that. I want to add a few yeah, thoughts. Yeah. 
Go, go ahead. Yeah, well, I, well I, by the way, I think this in some ways really made the case for what I said earlier. I mean, when you look at employee pro productivity is, you know, if you're a C-suite executive, if you're any type of manager, and, and remember, if you're a branch manager on here, you don't need your CEO to start um, sharing what the conversion numbers are. You know, you, you should know your data. You should know what your database size is. If you're a producing manager, you should know what the collective data size is of your organization. You should know how many credit reports are run in your branch. And, and you could literally just on your own, like scratch out that word employee productivity, call it loan officer productivity. You, you could start scorecarding based off of that. And, and then when you look at automation adoption, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard leaders say that, Hey, our biggest cost in the PNL is unutilized technology. And, poorly used technology like it's used but just just like data signals they call but they say the wrong things or or they don't take action on it uh so like think about it, if you just completely obsessed with how you measure um loan officer productivity obsessed with how you manage the adoption of key technology beyond the transaction uh, and then, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious expense variability and you're running a PL, like nothing will kill a business or a profit margin more than, than just, it's gotta, it's gotta equal up. Um, but if you manage those three things, what, what you're saying, Jim, that is the profit driven lender formula is, and, you know, and, and the, and the volume will come and everything else will come. Is that what you're saying here? Uh, it, it's it's exactly uh, what I'm saying, Dave, and and it's it's that productivity, the adoption of automation, the control of expense, and from that you'll get more volume, you'll get more margin. So interesting, like many things in life, the primary way you get to the main target of profit isn't necessarily what everybody else is doing or what appears to be the uh, the solution that that works. It's not just volume, it's not just margin. The productivity and the automation adoption, going back to that survey we did at ICE and at Meridian Link, those two things, productivity, adoption of automation, use of data, make the difference between losing 25, 50, 100 basis points and earning 50, 60, 80, 100 basis points. And there are lenders out there that are earning 80, 90 basis points. They're not telling anybody. They don't want anybody to know the formula, but there are absolutely lenders earning that money. And those invariably are focusing on these three things and using the prescriptive data that is available to them, whether it's from uh, your suite or other things that they're doing one way or the other, the success comes from those bottom three areas. And, and to me, Dave, that's that's a gift I want to share with people today because it's based upon a lot of research, a lot of man hours of people just grinding through data. And the answer is just obvious. And what you showed in that, that app to be able to give the signals, those prescriptive signals, they go do this and here's what you should say. That's money. Yeah, right. Well, it's profits. It is the definition of the profit driven lender. So if if anyone watched this would be last time I had a lot of uh, C suite executives leaders, they loved Moneyball Mortgage, I have a feeling they're going to love what you and I just went over. What's what's the best way for people to, you know, follow you, reach out to you, connect with you? Yeah, terraverde.com is uh, our website. And uh, certainly feel free to to to, to share my uh, email address or phone or whatever. Just just call Terra Verde, ask for me. I will take your call. I guarantee it. Yeah. And if anyone watched this, you want me to make an introduction to Jim. I had a number of leaders that were customers. They like, hey, introduce me to Jim. Feel free to reach out to me, Dave at trustengine.com. Uh, Jim and I are talking about doing some mastermind events Uh in person and virtually this year, we're kind of syncing up our calendars, but uh, there's a good chance we're gonna do something together um, on the East Coast and something on the West Coast. 
if you do want to be an executive that's invited to one of those masterminds that we do, and we're also talking about doing something virtually, just email me, Dave, at trustengine.com, and I'll, I'll put you on the list. I'm building a informal list of executives that we're going to invite. Uh, Jim, any, any closing thoughts before we wrap it up, my friend? I am absolutely the, the data and the, the lift and the leverage that one gets from prescriptive data is just unbelievable. And, uh, you know, Dave, I, I, I'm, I'm not a shareholder or interested in trust engine, but what you've put together is, uh, is just, uh, it, it's, it's just gold, it's money, it's profit. It's all there if you apply it. So yeah. I'm, I'm, Always great to to spend a few minutes with you and see what's uh, what you've been working on and cooking up and really look forward to those mastermind sessions. I think we'll have a lot of fun. So cheers, sir. Sure. Well, I, I love what you do of just, you know, bringing all the accounting together, helping people top tier their loan officers. And just a reminder, if you did not watch Moneyball, the big, the big poll there was start tiering your loan officers based off profitability, you know? So top tier loan officers aren't the most, you know, high producing loan officers always, they are the most profitable loan officers. And if you put them in tier one for most profitable, tier two in between, tier three, who is actually costing us a lot of money. And you start measuring that again, Moneyball Mortgage, you got to measure it all. Uh, hopefully you got value from this. If you are not already following our YouTube channel, Mortgage Coach YouTube, subscribe today so that you get updates. And follow savageinsights.com where I am putting whatever interview I'm doing next is at the top and whatever video I think is most important to watch for that week, I'll put it towards the top. So take care, everybody. Hope you got a lot of value. Thanks again, Jim. Awesome. All right. Thanks, David. Take care. Bye. Take care.